Today I'm speaking with Rob Heldorn from the ARIA Telco Management Company. So I have a few questions that I'd last like to ask you, Rob. Yes, Welcome sir. to our um, interview here. Thanks. It's, it's great, great to, be to on. have you on board. And so the first question I'd like to ask you is, um, what exactly is a telco company? Um, there's a few different ways of describing a telco company. I mean, you've got your, your large telcos like the Telstra and Optus and Vodafone and, and those sort of guys, and they're obviously the carriers and the networks. Um, but there's a lot of people that sit under, underneath that, which may be the dealers or the business centres or the stores, um, which essentially are like the, more of the sales channel, um, especially for the small to medium businesses. Most of the large corporates are handled by the internal telco companies, um, and a lot of the smaller companies are handled by, uh, or smaller clients are handled by the business centres and the dealers and what have you. So there are different grades of what a telco company is, but essentially it's, you know, we provide telecommunication services, whether it be mobiles, fixed line, internet, phone systems, any of that sort of thing. Right, okay. So are you like um, the shops you see in a shopping centre, or is it a uh, different thing again? Yeah, so my business is very different to a, a typical, I guess, telco dealer or, or um, store. Um, most telco dealers uh, or, or the business centres, they only have one product or one brand that they can sell. Um, you know, a Telstra business centre can only sell Telstra products, Optus can only sell Optus and so on. Um, the way my company is a little bit different is that I've actually got the ability to sell um, all three different mobile brands, so Telstra, Optus and Vodafone to my clients. Right. Um, and then on the, the fixed line and the, the internet space, um, I've, again, I've got multiple pr um, carriers and providers that I can sell, so Telstra, Optus, Exitel, I've got my own wholesale agreements and, and a couple others in there as well. Um, okay, excellent. Yeah. So where did the idea for ARIA telco management come from? Um, well, it was a long time in coming, I guess. I've been in the, the telco industry for the better part of 20 years. Um, I've worked for all of the big guys in the, you know, the business and the corporate space, Telstra, Optus, Vodafone, um, and it, it got to the stage where I kind of looked at what they were doing in their, their business model and it, to me it didn't feel right. You know, I was going in there, I was pushing one product and it may not be the best solution for the client because I've worked across all the different networks and, and looked at a, a number of different solutions over a number of years, I, I inherently kind of know whether a product is, is right for mm -hmm. the client. But when you're working for one of those dealers or business centres directly, that's all you've got. Mm -hmm. um, and so it didn't feel right. So. I did work for a company um, based in Sydney that kind of does, uh, you know, I, mo I modelled my company on because they've got the different um, agreements in place. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it was very much, I wanted to be able to go to my clients and say, here's the best offer from each of the different networks, here's the pros and cons of each, there's no smoke and mirrors, there's no sales tricks, you tell me what you want and I just manage it for you from there. Um, mm -hmm. So it's it was very much just about, instead of chasing a sales number every month, yeah. it was about doing the right thing mm. by the clients and, and manage them, them so long term. So you can tailor make, make their particular um, device or operations for them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it so depends okay. on the size of the client. Yes. So, I mean, you know, the, the larger the client, I've got clients with two or three phones and I've got mm. my, my two largest clients have got four and five hundred. So, you know, and pretty much everything in between. So right. the larger the client, there's more wiggle room um, and more that I can actually do for them to, to actually build a, a bespoke offering. Um, so this is what makes you different from other telco companies? Well, yeah, certainly. I'm, I'm not out there just pushing one specific no. product. Um, you know, it's and I've walked away from deals where I've said to a client, look, the, the best solution for you isn't a product I can offer. Mm -hmm. I might be able to beat that product on a cost-saving point of view, but there's these other factors in there that, mm -hmm. you know, make one of my competitors' products more suited to your, mm -hmm. your current situation. So um, I have, you know, I have no issue walking away from a deal if I feel like the, the right mm -hmm. thing for the client is to go somewhere else. Well, that's very reassuring, isn't it, for those out there, you know, watching this and wanting to yeah. get to know you. Um, for me, if I was out there looking for a new network or whatever it is, is it a phone? You're selling phones? Well, yeah, it's yeah. whether it's a phone system or yes. a mobile phone or yes. an anything, NBN connection, internet connection. Yeah. yeah, that would give me confidence. So, yeah, I'm very happy to um, that you're out there. Um, so what are the three biggest tips you could give anybody wanting to review their telecommunication services? Um, there's a few things. One of the things I've seen a lot lately is uh, just going and dealing with existing clients um, is that they're being offered these five-year contracts. Right. Um, yep. There's no real benefit in my eyes at least for a client signing a five-year contract. Um, reason being is that there's so many offers out there through myself and through others that I've seen 
that you know you will sign on to a three year contract. And we're talking more along the the, the um, phone systems and large data links and what have okay. you. Okay. Um, not the mobile phone space oh, okay. so much. But because my mind's going round, I'm thinking. <laughs> Do I need to talk to you and, and redo my, which we haven't long done, do I need to redo mine? But I, I sure. can't probably. Well, you're yeah, if, in, if you're locked into a contract, you're yes. locked into it. There yes. are, depending on the circumstances, you know, I have been able to get people out of their contracts. Right. Um, but it just depends. It's a case-by-case -case basis and, yes, you know, yeah. how, how that's and done. And you would but only do that if it was a... You considered it was greater benefit for them, or they considered well, yeah, it. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I'm happy to have a look at it, and I've, yeah. I've had situations where, you know, one in particular that comes to mind where a client was spending $2,300 a month. Um, I was able to, they had a $12,000 payout with their existing provider. I was able to reduce that payout to essentially next to nothing, um, finance what was remaining of that, and then put that together with their bill, and their, their total package for the month wow. was down to $1,500. That's, so that's, they saved that's $800 a, big dollars a month as well yes. as getting out of their contract without any upfront cost to do so. Wow, um, that's, that's very, that's a big difference, isn't it? And yeah. Well, look, it's, it's yeah. massive and there's, it's yeah. just about, from my point of view, it's just about knowing how to go about it. Yes, um, yeah. and, and who to very speak to and how to. obviously, well, in this industry. Well, right? again, yeah, because I've worked for all the different yes. carriers, I've got a lot of contacts within the different um, yeah. networks that yeah. I can just go to to get things Excellent. done. So mm. it's very rare that I'll just call the normal customer care lines because I've got so many different people that I can yeah. just go to go directly. Direct. Excellent. Okay, so um, we got. I, I'm very good at getting off the track. So did we go through the? <laughs> we, yeah, we only tips? got we only got the first one. So um, the first one is never sign a five year contract. Um, and I've had the discussion with uh -huh. just to summarise that I've had the discussion with a number of salespeople out there that are selling five year contracts. Yeah. And the reality is, I have the ability to do it, and you get paid a small fortune in commission if you do sell one. Mm -hmm. I just don't feel that there's any value in it for the client. Um, oh. And the discussion I've had with some of the salespeople out there is very much, look, if if you were getting paid exactly the same amount by your dealer or your network to sell a three-year contract over a five-year contract, would you ever sell a five-year contract again? Typically, I get a blank stare when I ask that question. They know what the answer is, they just don't want to say it. Okay. Um, right. the, there's, you know, the, the typical reason that people will sell a five-year contract or pitch a five-year contract is to say that, you know, the longer you sign up, the cheaper the price becomes. Mm -hmm. But when there's three-year contracts out there that are still a better price than the five-year contract they're trying to sell, it mm -hmm. kind of makes it null and void. Yeah. So th there's no real benefit to it. Um, to the that. second thing, I guess, is just understand your salesperson's agenda and what they're trying to, to achieve mm -hmm. um, when, they're, when they're presenting you with a deal. Um, reason being is that, you know, as a salesperson, I've gone to plenty of sales trainings and everything's based on, you know, work out what your client's drivers are, what their pain points are, hone down on that and, you know, try and press on that to, to get the deal signed. Um, and all I say to people is, you know, and to business clients in particular, is understand what your salesperson's drivers are. Right. Typically, it's a monthly target. Okay. Typically, what they're providing you is going to go towards a monthly target. And I had a situation earlier this week where um, I came across a client that is about 30 mobile services with a, I won't mention which network they're with, but with a particular network. And their account executive had proposed them a new solution for another two year contract. Um, I went in there and said, "Look, that in my mind isn't the right solution for you. So here's if you know if you were went this is mobile here. So here's your best solution with Telstra, Optus, and Vodafone. Um, one of which was obviously their existing carrier. The deal that I proposed to them for even for their existing carrier was still better than what their account executive had had offered. And I said to them, "Look, the reality is the reason they've offered you what they've offered you is because that counts towards their sales target." What I've offered you won't really count towards their sales target. They'll get next to no recognition. They'll, you know, very little commission on it in, you know, in reality. And I look at that and say, well, I'm not a short-term player. I don't look at anything I do as short-term. So I'd rather set somebody up on what's going to work for them. And if I get paid $300 instead of $1,000 for this deal, I don't care. Because okay. it's what's right for them, yes. and then long term, you know, I look after and make sure they're happy. I'll get referrals. I'll get That's repeat right. business, and, yeah. and so, so on. So it's, it's yeah. I don't have a sales so. target in my business at all. I refuse right. to have one. Um, it's it changes your mindset, because mm. you know. And again, I've worked in these businesses over many years, and what happens is you get to the last two or three days of the month, you might have a ten thousand dollar sales target for every month, mm -hmm. and you're sitting there going, well, okay, I'm sitting on seven and a half thousand. What have I got to do to hit my last two and a half thousand? So Number one, I don't get in trouble for missing my target. Mm -hmm. And number two, I hit my commissions. Right. And so it changes the mindset from what do I need to do for you, Mr. Client, to make sure that you know, you're looked after to 
what have I got to do to close this deal so I hit my target? Mm, um, right. And I just don't want that so it takes put that onto my equation. clients. Yeah, it 100% yeah. removes that entirely. Yeah. So um, that's, that gives a, um, a potential client a lot of confidence. Actually. Well, it's, yeah, and it's, it's the same sort of thing as having all of the different networks available. Mm -hmm. If you're doing everything that you can to give the client the best mm -hmm. deal possible mm -hmm. for them, mm -hmm. not necessarily for yourself, but for them, yeah. um, it, again, it's, mm -hmm. it's a long-term play. Mm -hmm. It's all about repeat business and referrals mm -hmm. and, you know, building the confidence with the client. Good way to, um, to do business, yeah. And the other thing, I guess the third point, um, would be just to understand, again, understanding what your salesperson's drivers are, but typically what will happen is, as a salesperson, you, you've got your monthly target, you might get to the last two or three days of the month and have, yep. to, have to hit that target. As a business or as a consumer, you can actually use that to your advantage where you will get a better deal out of your telco person, your sales representative, your account manager, in the last two or three days of the month because they're stressing about trying to hit that target. Yep. So they'll go the extra mile, they'll get you the extra credits. That they, you know, mm -hmm. You'll never see those credits in the first half of the month. But in the last two or three days, they're available. Okay. Um, and it's just about understanding that and using that to, to your advantage. So I guess the, the main three points is never sign a five-year contract. If you ever get presented a five-year contract... Are you just, listening? <laughs> yes, don't sign it. Um, or be very, very wary of it. Um, number two, just understand your salesperson's agenda, why they're presenting you with a deal that they, they are. Um, particularly if you're re-signing with the, the existing carrier. Mm -hmm. um, and number three is just try and keep everything off until the last two or three days of the month because you'll typically be able to push the, um, the carrier or the salesperson for, for a few more credits or a better deal than what you'll get in the first half of the month. Excellent. Very good tips to know. So are you across Australia, worldwide, or just serving the people of Western Australia? Certainly not worldwide yet. Okay. Maybe one day. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I do have clients all around the country. So right. one of my largest clients is actually based in Sydney. Um, but and, you, you live know, here. But you're, like, you're I'm, based yeah, in I'm, right? I'm based in Perth. So in Perth. Um, I'm actually from Sydney originally. So I've had a relationship with that client for, for a number of years. But yes, yeah. um, yeah, so I am based in Perth and predominantly focusing on the Perth market. But I do have clients that, that are around the Yeah, that want to deal country. with you. Yeah. Well, yeah, most yeah. of it comes from That's referrals. It. So, yeah, you know, fantastic. I'm dealing with a, a, another potential client in Melbourne at the moment. So. And that's how we like to run our business too, as, you, as people know, from, you know, referrals of very happy customers or clients. Yes, yeah, well, yeah, that's it. And, yeah. you, you know, you get that if you're doing the right thing by that's, the client and looking after them. That's exactly right. So. Client-focused. Exactly. Um, so, um, how can people get in contact with you if they'd like to see what you could do for them? Yeah, I mean, it's the, the I guess, the normal channels through yeah. the yeah. social media, LinkedIn and, and Facebook know. and yeah. what have you. Um, also, the website, ariatelcomanagement.com.au, um, or you can contact me directly. The, the office number is 0894670167, um, or I'm happy for people to call me directly on the mobile, 04133408. Excellent. Okay. Well, that will be up on the screen, uh, all of those details for um, people to um, be able to get your details to yep. make contact. Yeah, happy to so have a look at that. So anything else you'd like to say or have you really covered it? Oh, look, I, I think that's pretty much covered it. It's, it's understanding if you're going to look at a new deal with your telco provider, whether you have a look at your existing provider or you, you want to look around at your different options, just make sure you do your homework and compare to what's out there. Mm, yeah. um, a lot of the time what you get offered is basically just what's on the website. Mm -hmm, um, yes. So you're not really getting any, any ad added benefit um, and especially if you're staying with the the existing carrier yeah just be careful because most of the time what they'll try and offer you is a 24 month plan with a hardware allowance or, or something yeah. like that and okay. and it's all about because that's what's going to yeah. count towards their target it's not necessarily what's best yeah. for you there's there's always a lot of the time better options available so if i was going to um get anything from this so it would be that before I did anything else before I renewed my contract or changed my phone I would I think get in touch with Rob because I like the sound of what he has to offer oh, so thank you thank you very much Rob for yeah. coming in and not a problem great to be here yes, appreciate it's it it's great okay